Hello, welcome to a Midweek Business News Report. It's now time to bring a feature on the show today. Now, with a deadline for remittance of value added tax for the month of August being a major concern with regards to the deadline, the federal government, in its latest move, insists companies pay their federal in pay their taxes to the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Now, this it says would accord with the order by the Court of Appeal for a status quo antebellum. Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami S.E.N., clarified that the status quo referred to the state of affairs before parties went to court. Besides, he also emphasized that FRS remains the statutory value-added tax collecting authority in the country and not states. The tax collecting agency has also urged companies not to panic or be confused and remit their returns to the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Well, joining me now virtually to discuss this and much more, I have Lumide Esson, partner, tax and regulatory services, Deloitte. Good to have you on the breakfast show this morning, Lumide. Good morning, now, David. Going by the tussle we've had back and forth with regards to value-added tax collection now, what do you think this clarification does for the public, especially at a time where the organized private sector of Nigeria and others were in a state of confusion as to whether or not to pay taxes to the federal or state government or even a situation of double uh, tax payment? But now the clarification is clear. Taxes to be paid to the federal government. What do you make of this clarification? Yeah, so thanks, David. Um, we should take a step back a little. Um, this is not the first time we are having some form of brouhaha around um, VAT collection in Nigeria. Um, Lagos State has been to the Supreme Court in the past. Um, however, the ruling was that Supreme Court will only have jurisdiction if the case had to do between the state and the federal government. And the court ruled that since the issue was between the state and the FRS, um it did not have jurisdiction now i haven't said that um rivers that tried to avoid that by going straight to the federal high court and of course they got a judgment on the night of august um but then the federal government and frs were able to get still of execution um on the 10th of september now there's been a lot of confusion um out there as to who exactly should Companies and businesses in River State and Lagos will be paying, you know, the VAT to until the substantial issue is um, is ruled on by um, the Federal Court of Appeal. So, um, you know, yes, there is an appeal court ruling stay in execution, which, which essentially means that okay, parties um, still put on what it was uh, before the issue went to court. So, I, I think Nigerians should look beyond the the state of execution issue. Um, David, eventually, there will be a ruling at the Federal Appeal Court, and it could swing it away. Um, what I thought should be the primary concern right now is the Federal Government being the big brother. Get the states to talk um, and look at how you know this issue can be resolved. When you have a federation, there would always be multiple taxing entities. Yeah. All the big states around the world have similar issues. Brazil... I've got a federal VAT, I've got a state VAT. The United States, I've got GST across the different states in the United States. Um, you know, New York, Alabama, South Dakota, everyone have got, you know, one form of GST or the other. India, India had significant issues similar to what we had um, until 1st of July 2017, when they actually had constitutional amendment because they realized this was not something that the federal government could resolve on its own. They had to amend the constitution. Now, what they have is kind of bicameral. They've got, you know, um, the federal collecting the GST on interstate transactions. Um, and, you know, whilst the states continue to collect on intrastate transactions. And this was, you know, um, the solution to the problem they were having because they were now having serious um, state boundary issues. You know, trucks would have to park while the various state collecting agents ensure that VAT or GS, that the case may be, had been collected. Yeah. But, you see, India came together to resolve the issue. They amended the Constitution, yeah. you know, and just to make it work. So, f for me, I think the big focus of government, federal government should be, how do we protect businesses? MSME inclusive. How do yeah. we help them to thrive? 
Yeah, I'd like well, to bottom in here now, talking about the protection right. of businesses, small and medium-sized enterprises, large corporates, along the different spectrum of the economy. Now, uh, uh, one of the clarifications that also came is that states have no right to clamp down on such businesses, and if they do, those entities can sue the states. That's according to one of the highlights of the issues we have on ground at this point in time. How do you see things playing out within this regard? Okay, so th there are two things, David. There is debate about the constitutionality or the legal provisions for states to clamp down. Um, you know that under the Personal Income Tax Act, the states can restrain, um, subject to them updating, um, you know, court warrants. Okay, um, let's let's not focus even on the legal routes. Let's focus on the business disruptions. Is the business disruptions that mm. businesses don't want? You can go to court and it can take you years and yes. years, you know, to get a ruling in your favor. But you see, look at very big multinationals operating in this country. Um, you know, when you have such a disruption, you know, it makes headlines in their own countries. It's bad business. It's bad for the brand. So I, I think we should, you know, it's not just a case of like you can take them to court. That doesn't help the businesses. What helps them is, look, can you reach out to the states, calm the nerves? This is not a time for posturing. This is a time to look at how we make this work. How can we resolve this amicably? Whilst the court, you know, is, is going through its processes. So that, that for me, that that is what the federal government should focus on. Because here, let's not forget, David, federal government is the big brother. Hmm. Take that bold step and reach out to the states. Calm the nerves. I'm I mean, talking about common the nerves, uh, we, we, for the lack of time now, let's gradually wrap up our conversation. Also looking at the language of the Big Brother being thrown up there in the air throughout all of this conversation, states being the, uh, each other's keepers and brothers to each other. How then do we now begin to have states much more commercially viable, look at areas of competitive advantages and also have unique uh, tax uh, collection strategies that would help up their uh, revenue base, hence we don't necessarily have to have such huge level of dependency either on each other or from the federal government waiting on allocations. Look, David, the beauty of fiscal federalism is that it forces each of the units to leverage on their comparative advantages. You would see already from the two states that have passed the VAT law, River State had 7.5%, Lagos State had 6%. If you were a business owner, where would you situate your business? You would come to Lagos. And that is the whole essence of fiscal federalism. And what you would also see is, you look, having a reduced rate is not sufficient to attract the businesses. There must be infrastructure, there must be facilities, there must be securities. This forces the states to look inwards. Do you, you could think there's a change? Do you think the governors understand these elements you just highlighted here? Because it just seems like the same old models or approaches that what we've seen over the past few decades. It seems like the governors don't have a sense of understanding of where their comparative advantages are. Some even think their states are not viable in any sense of the word. Yeah, well, David, the, the beauty of competition is that when you see other states doing something, you want to do something as well. Okay, so if you see other states attracting investors, it's a no-brainer. You're going to have to realize you've got to do something differently. And and I think that that forces the hands of the governors. You don't want to constantly go to Abuja every month for FAC allocation. You want to get something done. You would have people in your state to look at what can we do, what can we leverage on, what advantages do we have that others do not have. And, you know, I, I won't be surprised if you have a big state that says, look, in my state, you know, VAT will be zero. I mean, what you see is if you have infrastructure, if you have security and your tax systems are more conducive than other states, you know, investors will gravitate towards your state. So, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, this is forcing a conversation that we ought to have had several decades ago. And regardless of the outcome of the Federal Appeal Court, something has changed. Night of August has changed something in this country. Hmm. And how do we also silence the noise of corruption within our tax system? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, what you also find out is that, you know, with time, um, besides the issue of rates and besides the issue of corporate advantage, um, companies are going to start focusing on other issues. You know, first, you know, you want to look at the bigger issues first. And then you start to address other issues later. If you have issue of your uh, of of the tax rate address, for example, you have a rate a, a, a state has got a reduced rate, has got infrastructure, has got facilities. After you've enjoyed that for a while, then you move on to next. You know, ease of doing business. 
oh, I'm having issues with the tax authorities. There's some element of corruption. You know, once people start to talk about this thing, the states are forced to look into it because you do not want to lose that comparative advantage. You do not want the company to start leaving your state. In fact, when the first two, three investors leave, you would actually have to address the issue. So, mm. like I've, I've, I've told some people recently, I said, look, at the end of the day, you're going to see things naturally evolve over time once we set the tone once we start off with this in journey of fiscal federalism which everybody has been talking about for a long time okay. we need to you know have a fiscal federation where um, a lot more depends on fiscal efficiency and not on population and equality of state which have been the two you know cardinal principles you know uh, among among the five for distribution of of national wealth in nigeria we well, always talk about equality mm -hmm. of state you know 40 percent in the case of general allocation you know 50 percent in the case of vat and then we have the population which is the next big thing we need to move more towards fiscal efficiency in those states as a basis to allocate revenues today thank you very much for your time on the breakfast show this morning illumide so it's been a pleasure speaking with you and we hope the government also takes cues from all of these issues they're highlighting and then definitely we have to see an evolution in our tax system thank you very much once again for your time thanks for having me yeah Right.